Roy Corman, el piloto que condujo el eh, auto con el chasis número 001 eh, cuando el BMW M3 debutó por primera vez aquí en Estados Unidos en el año 88. Y Roy Corman, ya lo van a escuchar, una persona realmente increíble. Tomen en cuenta, este piloto tiene 78 años y los invito a que vayan a ver el video de la vuelta que dimos juntos ahí en Road America. Así que vayan a Autos Javier Mota en YouTube para que vean esa fabulosa experiencia. Y por ahora escuchen aquí la entrevista con Roy Corman, el piloto del BMW M3 original. Well, here at the end of the day with uh, BMW M3 and M4 at Road America, and we have uh, one of the legends uh, that drove the cars, uh, the original cars. So, Mr. Ray Corman, uh, how are you? Oh, very good. Enjoying the day. Excellent. Even though it's a little bit uh, wet, a lot of rain, uh, but um, it's a little bit dangerous for us. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll see what we can do out there. But uh, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about the the history of of you and these cars here in the U.S.? Well, as a mentioned in my speech, the uh, we we got into this by winning the championship with the 325, the driver championship and the manufacturer championship. When was and that? Then that was in '86. Okay. And uh, and then the following year, BMW came and said, "Well, you know, we'd like us to run the M3s." So we started actually with chassis number 001 and 002. So it was a <laughs> the great start. So you, yeah. you, you so drove they, they the original actually, cars. Yeah, they were actually the first two M3s in the United States. That's yeah. amazing. So these cars, I mean, the, 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 the idea behind these cars when they developed them in Germany was to compete. And you got to do just that here in the States. Yeah. Well, see, in Germany, they were developing Group A stuff, yeah. which were parts and things that we could not use. So we had to start off from scratch with the season all underway. So it was well through the year before we really had things going well. And I think the last three races were the first we became competitive. Unfortunately, then, as we got our big one-two win at the Glen, The following year, of course, the M3 stayed the same. There were no updates for it uh -huh. for the next three years, whereas the Porsches got updates, the, the Chevys got a bigger engine, the Mustangs got bigger brakes, so it got harder and harder as we went on. But we still were Very always in the top ten, most times in the top five. Yeah, so uh, the original car had a four-cylinder engine, and you were competing against uh, V8s and yes, uh, huge yes, cars. Yes. So Nissan how, Turbo. Exactly. Yes. So how, how, how was that? I mean, how were you yeah. able to do uh, well, that good? part of it was the reliability of the BMW. I mean, we could essentially turn our qualifying times the whole six hours yeah. where the other guys would be off three, four, five, six seconds uh, toward the end of the race. In the 24-hour race, there'd be an even bigger difference in, in lap times from the start to the finish. And uh, by the end, we, we would, we'd, you know, 24 hours. I remember John Andretti saying, you're not going to drive the whole race at this speed. I said, yeah, you know, you can do it. And so yeah. on. Uh, it's amazing, really, what uh, the engineers can, can do with these cars back since those days, right? I mean, those cars... Yes. I mean, pretty amazing uh, what, what yeah. they were able to do and, and still do today. Well, it was really interesting to me to learn today uh, that the, the engineer that helped develop the E30 M3 program is the same fellow now that's been in charge of developing the M3 yeah. M, the current M3 M4. That's incredible. So he has uh, all the history on that. But uh, So these cars are meant for driving. And uh, so tell us about, like, obviously a little bit, I mean, they're completely different, but... Uh, little experience like racing these cars and probably you have one to drive every day too or not well i've driven some on the street and they're, they're you know they make a great street car uh i think they're more popular now than they were when they were new there's people selling them for five six thousand dollars more than when they were brand new you know yeah. they're low mileage so uh it, it's a, a a great car for long distance or if you want to go out to bmw club driving school or something like that it's probably one of the best cars to do it with So you obviously had experience with the BMWs before you got into the M3, uh, uh, dri driving the M3s. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was what struck you like as the, the biggest difference uh, back then when when you got the, the first ones? Well, my first BMW I bought in 1964 was an 1800 Ti. Um, they told me afterwards it was actually the first 1800 Ti in the United States. Oh, you got you got yes. two then? Yes, yeah, so I had two first, and uh, it, that was the first car that was still running good after I finished paying for it. Wow. So, so that impressed <laughs> that me. That's a good car. And I have stayed with BMWs ever since. <laughs> oh, okay. So that, that, that's a pretty cool story. And then, so let's talk a little bit more about racing. What were the, 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 the main uh, challenges? I mean, you were, we, we already talked about, like, driving against uh, more powerful cars, bigger mm -hmm. engine cars yeah. and all of that. 
But this car can handle and, and do matter, many other things that those cars couldn't do. Well, we, we certainly had an advantage in the corners and an advantage braking. I mean, while we had trouble with the brakes overheating, I mean, at any one point, I could outbreak any of the V8s. Yeah. And uh, our, our normal thing was if, if we, like here, uh, with what they call the kink, we could take it flat out with the E30 M3. Here at Road America. Yes, yeah. yeah. But if I followed a Camaro in there really close, he would actually slow me. And then as he came out, he'd hit that big vate and just pull away. What I had to do was lift early, make sure I was dead on line, go through it flat out, so my exit speed would match his torque. I could draft him all the way up the straight, that tuck and bind, and I'll break him at the next turn. So that's, that's how we had to drive. <laughs> so a little bit of, a, uh, not a little bit, a lot of uh, ability and technical knowledge of uh, what you can do while driving, but yeah. also the car has advantages in that sense, being lighter and smaller and all that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what other stories do you have uh, from those uh, from those days uh, driving the the original M3? Oh, we'd be here a long time. If <laughs> well, I uh, a short one. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, well, I think you know one of the one of the great ones was when we got the one two finish. It's the only time in the seven year history of that uh, series that a team got a one two finish, and we were actually running first and fourth. John Andretti was uh, in this. Second car running fourth, there was a Camaro about 100 yards ahead of him, and they were both running at the same speed. Neither was getting you know, any distance on the other. Davy was in the lead with a Camaro behind him. As they, we approached our last fuel stop, John called in and said, the, the handling's gone away, it's a terrible oversteer. So as he came in to refuel, my crew chief jumped underneath, saw that the front sway bar link had broken, wow. and he actually got that changed within our normal refueling time. Wow, how long did it take? And, it not and long so, so, so we, you know, it was just like a minute and 10 seconds he wow, got it incredible. done. That meant we actually, then, the Camaro came in for fuel at the same time. Both cars came in, Camaro first and us uh, second. Well, we changed quick enough, we got out ahead of the Camaro, even though we changed the sway bar length. Uh -huh. So now the two of them are going together at the same speed, but now we're 100 yards ahead of the Camaro. Up front, Davey called in. He says that Camaro has bumped him a few times. That he's going to just push him out of the way toward the end of the race. <laughs> yeah, so he said, I'm going to let him by, and I'll just hound him from the back. Well, he pushed the Camaro so much that he overheated his brakes. Two laps from the end, the Camaro went straight off at the end of the front straight with no brakes, and that left us with our one-two finish. So that was certainly the high point of the year. That was excellent. I mean, thank you very much for uh, sharing all your, your, your uh, history here with the BMW. And, and honestly, I mean, like, you kind of... Like, didn't like like it or you were humble enough to say yeah. like when you hear about you are a legend and, and you are i mean with oh, these cars okay. no all right well it's, it's it was a great time we had a good time with the cars and uh you know i have to give it to bmw it was it was a, a super car and you know there's not many four cylinders you go out there well there wasn't any other four cylinders we could go out there and run with the the v8s the guys, and the turbos yeah. yeah so you're driven obviously the new one Yes, I got out there with and, it yesterday. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, mean, I can't believe they put so much racing technology into a street car. Exactly. But, and uh, so if you had had that car back then uh, when you started in the, the, the original M3, oh, yeah. you would have won we, every yeah, race. <laughs> yes, we'd, we'd have left everybody several times over. Yes, there's no, there's no comparison. You know, it, It's like comparing an Isetta to the first M3, but to compare the first M3 <laughs> to the current one. I mean, I it's, a, it's a different world. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. It was an honor for me talking to you and uh, to hear about your history with the M3 and the BMW. And we're going to, the promise is you can take us in the original car to our lap here yeah. in North America. Okay. So we're going to go enjoy that with you. Okay, very good. Thank All you right. very much. Okay, thank you. Espectacular realmente Roy Corman en el BMW M3 original ahí en Road America. Así que estamos llegando a la, al final de esta edición especial el lanzamiento del BMW M3 y M4 en Road America en Milwaukee y otra vez los invito para que vayan a Autos Javier Mota en YouTube para que vean toda la actividad que realizamos ahí en Milwaukee yo soy Javier Mota, esto es Cristina Radio Network y los espero en otra edición de Autos 060 Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting Thank you.